Welcome to today's lesson. I'm Siamasaka Kiran Dens. And so today I'm going to take you through the lesson physics and in particular we'll look at uh, electrics, electric circuits. And so we go straight into the lesson for today. Well, as I indicated uh, today, we are going to look at uh, electric circuits. And so to simplify um, uh, in finding solutions for electric circuits or in electric circuits, um, Kirchhoff actually developed two rules. And these are the ones we're going to look at actually when you have a, a complex network of electric circuits. And so you'd want to find the solution for them. And so Kirchhoff, actually developed some rules and these rules are very basic indeed and there are only two rules. And so the first rule states that uh, the sum of uh, currents entering a junction uh, must equal the, the sum of the currents leaving that same junction. What it means is that uh, uh, actually if, for example, you have a current entering a junction and another current entering a junction, say this is current one and this is current two, and then you have one current which is leaving the junction. According to the first rule, current one plus current two, which are entering the junction, should be equal to current three, leaving the junction. And so the first rule, um, actually what it states is that you need to sum up all the currents that are entering a junction. The junction is actually a joint in a network. And then these, um, uh, the sum of the currents entering sh should always be equal to the sum. Also, you add all the currents leaving, all the currents actually leaving the, the junction. And so, therefore, this rule is known as the, the junction rule. It is known as the, the junction rule. And so the second rule states that uh, the sum of the potential differences across all the elements around any closed uh, circuit loop must be zero. In other words, uh, it indicates that you should also add all the potential differences for across each element, across each element, you add them, and uh, that uh, should be in a closed circuit, meaning that uh, you should start uh, from somewhere and come back to the same point, make, meaning you are making a circle. In other ways, a loop can be, for example, starting from here, a loop can be like that you are starting that point. So all the, for example, if here there is actually potential difference, there there is a potential difference, there there is a potential difference, there is a potential difference. So from where you have started from up to when you come back to the same point, which makes a loop, you should add all the potential differences. In other words, you are adding this is voltage one, this is voltage two, this is voltage three, this is voltage four. You add them together and the sum of them should be equal to zero. That is actually these two basic um, actual rules what they mean. In other words, uh, actually the rule number one the junction rule, which is that actually um, 
or the sum of the currents entering a junction should be equal to the sum of the currents leaving a junction. Uh, actually, this one, it is um, states that a charge will never be destroyed. And therefore, it means that the charge entering, in other words, if you have a junction there, you have a current coming through here and another current going out here. In other words, the, the charge which is entering, charge number one, and the, this one is entering the junction, and this one is leaving the junction. And so current one plus current two should be equal to current three. So in other words, you are conserving here the charge. So the amount of charge entering into a junction should be equal to the amount of a charge leaving the junction. And so this is the, the junction rule. Similarly, the loop rule um, actually it has to do with the conserving energy. In other words, the potential difference across each element. When you add all of them, actually they should add to zero meaning that you are conserving actually energy. And so this is what it means. And so here is um, a network, um, an electric circuit, which basically we have outlined. We have the voltage one, and then there is the resistor, resistor one there, and we have the current here. And then again, you have voltage two, which is the battery there, and we have a resistor here, and there is current two entering to that junction. And we have a current here leaving the junction at, at C. And we have another resistor three. And so we'll see how we can use uh, these rules. That is the junction rule and the loop rule. So, First of all, uh, actually, what it means is that, uh, for example, now we have to look at uh, the, the, the junction rule. The junction rule, as we stated, actually, we are saying uh, the current entering. So the current, current one plus current two should be equal to current three. Because this current, if we take our junction to be here at C, this is our junction. So current one actually is entering the junction and current two is entering the junction and current three is leaving the junction. And so you add the two currents which are entering the junction and then the currents which are leaving the junction. So um, now we look at uh, the loop rule. When you are considering the loop rule, actually there are about four aspects you should consider which will enable you to actually precisely use the rule. As you remember, we said the loop rule states that uh, all the potential differences uh, on the loop, you need to sum them and they should all add up to zero. In other words, for example, um, on this one here, the potential difference here, you know, this is the negative part of the battery, this is the positive. And since the current is flowing in that direction, we expect that one, this one to be the same current from there to there. But when it reaches this point, there is a voltage drop because of the resistor. Okay. And therefore here, what we're going to have is resistor one, the voltage drop multiplied by the current one, which is this current here. Similarly, so we are taking this loop here, which is uh, 
we are taking loop A, B, C, actually F. So this is the loop we are considering now. So in other words, what we are saying is that, again, uh, this current, when it reaches this junction, uh, it goes this way, and here there is a voltage two. This is uh, actually the negative of the battery. This is the positive, so the current will flow in that direction, and meaning that uh, this one will be positive, and this is the negative because there is a current is flowing in that direction, current two flowing in that direction, and so this resistor there is a potential difference this one will be at a higher potential than this one and therefore this is what happens and then this current this is for loop number one so when you add you add uh, this voltage this one will be positive then this one will be negative because actually there is a drop in the uh, the potential difference, and therefore it will be actually a, okay. It will be actually okay. It will be actually R multiplied by R one multiplied by R uh, I one. So this is the loop. So we'll come up with the and similarly on the second loop F, we expect also the current here go around this rope, which is rope F, C, D, E. And so here, when the current comes here, uh, we expect that this will be positive, and then this will be negative. Because we'll see, the current is flowing in that direction. So basically, this is the first step we are supposed to do when we actually we want to use the loop law. And so this is the, the explanation. If a resistor is traversed in the direction of the current, the charge in the electric circuit across the, the potential, electric potential across the resistor it will be negative. What it means is that, for example, let's consider loop one. Remember I said loop number one is A, B, C, F. It is loop, uh, A, B, C, F loop, okay? So we said that actually, if we look at the, the first one here, we said this will be positive, B1. This will be positive V1. Why is it V1? Because actually we are moving from a low potential to higher potential, which is from negative to positive. But when you reach on this resistor, uh, you'll see there is a drop in the potential difference. So we are going to have negative here because of the drop. And therefore, we are going to say uh, at this point on resistor number one, we are going to have resistor one, which is negative, multiplied by current one. And then we go through this loop, we come here. And as we are going this direction now, we are going against the current. Remember this current, current two is flowing that direction. So this one is negative and this one is positive. So this is an increase from a lower potential to high potential. So this one will be positive. R2 multiplied by uh, I2, meaning that that is the voltage. Voltage is actually the resistor times current. Resistance times current. So we have positive R2 multiplied by current 
number two. And so, when we reach here, now we are going towards A there. We notice that from here, we are moving from the high potential to the lower potential. So this will be minus V2. So we are going to have minus V2. And all these, they should give us actually zero. So that is for group number one, which we said group ABCF. Now let's look at another loop. Another loop is actually another circle that we can make is F C D E. F C D E. We have loop F C D E, which is a loop. And so we are starting from uh, for loop two, we are starting from F. And so um, from F, you know such that if we are moving in that direction, it means that this one, we are moving from a lower potential to high potential. This one will be positive, negative to positive. That is actually positive. So that is V2. So we have positive V2. And then when we come here, R2, it is actually plus minus. So there's a drop in potential here. This one will be negative. So we're going to have negative R2 multiplied by current number two. And then we are moving in that direction. We come here. And from here, we are going to have, uh, when we reach here, from positive to negative, that's a drop. Also, that one will be minus. And so we are going to have resistor number three multiplied by current number three, which is going to give us zero. So this is how actually basically you can use the loop loop. In other words, what it means here, as we were indicating, we are saying uh, if a, a source of a motive force, which is the voltage, is to invest in a direction of the motive force that is from negative to positive on the terminals, the charge in electric potential is actually positive. What it means uh, is that, uh, for example, here we were moving from negative to positive, and therefore this one becomes Z positive V2. However, if a source of EMF traversed in the direction opposite the EMF, that is from positive to negative on the terminals of the battery, the charge, the change in electric potential would be negative. What it means, that's how we found actually on this loop we found V2 on loop number one, we found V2 to be negative it's because when we are moving, we were moving in that direction. And the current was moving in that direction, which is opposed. And therefore, that's why here it is actually negative. Okay. So number one, we were saying it is a actually the resistor is traversed in the direction of the current. The change in electric potential across the resistor is actually negative. If the current is flowing in the same direction as you are moving. So for example, here we are traversing 
in the direction of the flow of current. This is the flow of current. As we are moving also, we are, so the here, this one becomes negative. However, if the resistor is traversed in the direction opposed to the current, the change in electric potential across that resistor will be positive. What it means here, for example, here, as we are moving this way for loop number two, we note that here, the current is flowing in that direction. Therefore, this one becomes negative. But in the first instance, loop one, when we are moving, we are moving, the current is moving in that direction. But as we are moved to a vessel going in this direction, and therefore we are moving from negative to positive, that one becomes positive. So basically, this is actually what it means. And so we have applied the junction loop. Applying the junction loop, as we indicated, we just said actually current one plus current two gave us current three. When we looked at the junction loop, because this, we take this junction. So the current flowing through this junction, current one. And here, the current flowing through the junction, current two. And the current flowing away from the junction, current three. And so that is basically what it means. Now, applying the loop rule, as we indicated, we said that actually, we said actually, V1, which was positive, minus R1, I1, because this is in the same direction as the current. And then we had positive, R2 multiplied by current number two, then minus V2, which is equal to zero. This is exactly what we did earlier on. This is exactly what we did earlier on. We are saying here, there is a rise, here there is a drop, as we come going this side, here there is a rise, and here there is a drop. And when you add all of them, they should give you actually zero. This is for loop number one. For loop number two, we said voltage number two, and this one is the, the same direction as the current. Current two multiplied by current two, resistor two multiplied by current two, and then plus resistor three multiplied by current three should be equal to zero. As we indicated, uh, we are saying actually, Here there is a rise, and here there is a drop, and here there is a drop. So in other words, what we are saying here, this part here should be negative, because this is a drop also. So this is a drop also. So in other words, what we are saying here is that as we are moving from here, there is a rise, there is a drop, and there is a drop. And all of them, they should add up to zero. And so this is actually basically 
applying the principle of uh, actually pitch off. So if we have understood the exact three, what uh, we discussed here, uh, I'm telling you that you will not find any problems when we go into actually solving the problem. And so we need to apply this uh, now scenario to actually ideal question so that we know whether we have actually understood the concept. So uh, we'll go straight into a question. And this question actually states that uh, the first part of the question uh, would want us to state actually teach of laws. And then the second part is that uh, there is actually a circuit which contains velocity and voltage one, which is 10 volts, voltage two, which is five volts, resistor one, which is 20 volts, resistor two, which is two, uh, two ohms, and resistor one, which is actually 20 ohms, resistor three, which is 15 ohms. Okay, and so this is basically the the same question that actually we are looking at. And so um, when you look at this one, this will be negative, this will be positive, this will be positive, and then this will be negative because the current is flowing in that direction. And if we are going to this loop here, for loop number one, which is A, B, C, F. It means that this one will be a positive. This is negative. This is negative. This is positive. And for, loop, for this other loop, it means that the current here, this will be positive and this will be negative. Okay. And so now we can merely apply the junction loop and as well as the loop loop. So for the junction loop, we know that this current here, current one is entering the junction and current two is entering the junction and current three is leaving the, the junction. And so to state now, the first part of the question is the state actually Kirchhoff's laws. Actually, Kirchhoff's laws, as we stated earlier on, they, they state as follows. The first statement is that the sum, the sum of all the currents entering a junction must equal to the sum of the current actually leaving the junction. The second part is that the sum of all the potential differences across all the elements around the circuit, around a closed circuit loop must be added and they should give us actually zero. And so, now we solve the question. So we said current one, junction loop plus current two should be equal to current actually three. This is the first part of the, the equation. And so we can say this is our equation number one. Now we apply the loop rule. We have actually a, the first part of the equation is the 10 volts, and that is positive. So we're going to have 10 volts minus actually. 20 ohms multiplied by current one. So I'm going to have 20 ohms multiplied by 
current one. Then we are going to have, this will be positive now, two ohms multiplied by current two. We are going this way. To be plus two ohms multiplied by current two and minus, actually when you are going from here to there is this minus five volts. Minus five volts, this should be equal to zero. We can simplify this equation, 10 minus five, actually it is five minus 20i, one plus two i two, which is equal to zero. Can you further simplify this equation? You can say 20 minus i one plus two i two current two is equal to negative five to bring the five this side. So we can avoid here uh, dealing with the negatives. We can divide by negative one everywhere. And what we are going to have is 20 I1. When you divide negative 20 divided by negative one, you get actually positive. And then this one becomes a negative because we're going to say positive two I divided by negative one, which gives us negative is equal to five when you divide this one also. So this one becomes our equation number two. That is for the, that loop. Now we look at uh, the second loop. The second loop, as we can see, it will be positive five. We are looking at loop F, C, so we're going to look at, look at loop F, C, D, E. And therefore, if we are starting from here, from negative to positive, this is actually positive, and this one will be negative. So, and this one will be also negative. And so we have five and two. So we are going to have five volts, which is positive, minus two times current two, minus, we can look at, uh, this is 15 ohms times current three. 15 ohms, which is negative, times current three, which we should give us zero. We are done with that loop. And therefore, we can do as we did. We can have here to simplify this equation further. Minus 50 I3, which should be equal to negative five. We can actually avoid dealing with the negatives. We can divide uh, by negative one everywhere and we are going to have two times current two plus 15 plus current three, which is equal to five. And this is our equation number three. And so now we have three equations. We have equation one, which is I one, plus I2 equal to I3, current one plus current two equal to current three. And the second equation is 20 times current one minus two times current two which equal to five. The third one is current two multiplied by two plus 15 
multiplied by current three is equal to five. So we have these three equations. So our physics finished here, or we are now applying is mathematics to solve these three equations. So we can start from here. What we can do is that we need to remain with the two simultaneous equations, which will be easier to handle. And so we can reduce these three equations into two equations. So for example, if we have current two here, plus 15, multiplied by current three. Remember current three here, we found that current three is equal to current one plus current two. So where there is current three, we can substitute actually. Where there is current three here, we can put current one plus current two. Why? Because we said current one plus current two from equation one is equal to actually current three. So it's equal to five. So we can simplify this equation, which is two I two plus 15 I one plus 15 I two, which is equal to five. We can actually add the I one. Uh, here we have two common I two. We have two I two and 15 I two, which gives us 17. So we can say 15 I one plus a 15 plus two, this gives us 17 I two, because we have these two, which is equal to five. And this one becomes our equation number four. And so now, you, if you notice that here, we have uh, two variables, I1 and I2 in equation four, as well as in equation two, we have I1 and I2. And meaning that these two equations actually, we can solve them simultaneously. And so let's solve these equations so that we can solve for I1 and I2. And so the first equation is that uh, equation two is 20I1 20I1 minus 2I2 two is equal to 5. That is equation number two. Then we, we go to equation number four, 15 I one plus 17 I two. We have 15 I one plus 17 I two, which gives us five. So we have these two simultaneous equations, which we can now solve. So for us to solve these equations, it means that one of them should be made to be zero. So we can multiply by a factor so that we make one of these to be zero, we eliminate it. So for example, if we multiply by negative three here, multiplied by 20 to give us negative 60. And we should also make this 15 to be 60, positive 60, so that when we subtract, it gives us zero. And here we can multiply by positive four. Okay, meaning that we are multiplying with everything here. This is our 15. And so when we multiply, three multiplied by 20, we are actually getting negative 60 
20 multiplied by negative three, which is I work a negative that negative three times negative two I two, which gives us actually six C positive six C I two, which is equal to negative actually 15, which gives us negative 15. And when we multiply four times 15, it gives us positive 60, 60 I1 plus four times 17, that is eight, four times seven, eight, eight. This gives us 68, positive 68 multiplied by I2, which is equal to four times five, which is positive 20. So we can add, if you add this, this one becomes zero. If you add six plus 68, this gives us uh, actually I2 here, which is, uh, this is 14, which gives us 74. I2 is equal to negative 15 plus 20. When you add this, it gives us actually five, positive five. And therefore you can say 74, I2 is equal to I. We can divide here by 74, and there 74. What we get is I2 because this one and this one will cancel is equal to five divided by 74, which is uh, actually zero point zero six seven six amps. So it means that we have calculated the value of I2. And so for us to calculate the value of I1, we can substitute in one of these equations. For example, we can get the equation number one. You can get this equation 20i1 minus 2i2 is equal to 5. We substitute this current. We can substitute this current there, which means that we'll be able to get i1. And so we have the equation 20i1 minus 2i2 is equal to. I. And so we have 20 I1 minus 2 times 0 0.0676 amps, which we got should be equal to 5. So we can say 20 I1 is equal to when you add this, you multiply this one and then you add it, it will give you 5.1352. You can divide here by 20 and there, you divide. So your I1 will be equal to 0 0.2. Five, six, seven, six amps. So we have found our I1 to be that value. And so for us to find the I2, I3, we merely use equation number one. Since we have found, uh, since we have found this one, 
we have found that one. You can just add them and then you'll be able to get I3. And so you can say I1 plus I2 gives us current three. And this one we found 0 0.0676. Amps plus current two, we found that it is actually zero point two five six seven uh, six, which can give us actually current three. And so when you add this you we'll find that your current three is actually uh, zero point three two four three six amps, or you can easily round it off to three decimal places, which is actually 0 0.324 amps. Okay. And so I thought today we'll look at you how we can use actually Kishore's law. And so, uh, this is basically how we use Kishore's law. So those who want to to contact me and they want to actually in case of lessons, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number, which is plus 260 949. Nine. I normally also conduct lessons um, which are actually live lessons where uh, you as a student, we can actually be online actually as I take you through the lessons and you can actually get clarifications so that I can explain exactly what uh, actually we needed to do. You can also contact me, all these are small cases through my email, which is ksyamasaka at gmail dot com if you want to actually one on one lessons worldwide so um actually i'm available so we can arrange for a time as well as the, the small token that you are supposed to pay to enable you to get more knowledge and you know uh these uh, youtube lessons i've uploaded i just I normally look at only one lesson but uh, when we make arrangements i can explain further and also actually tailor the lesson according to the course outcome that you have been given. So I thank you. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube. Thank you for listening.